Yes, who wouldn't be hoping that? Well, some people might want to go out in a blaze of glory. I mean, it's Sons of Anarchy can happen. I think that's the thing, is like, you, you, you kind of want to stay alive as long as you can, but if you do go out, you want to go out in a blaze of glory. That's, that's the... One, that's one of my the, favorite things we're all about film, great appreciation of film. Yeah, everybody likes to stay alive. Everybody says the same question. I'm, uh, you see the, uh, the Wild Bunch, Ernest Borgnine, Warren Oates, and William Holden, when they come out of the courthouse and they just look at each other and Ernest Borgnine smiles, they walk over to their horses, you think they're going to leave, and they walk you toward a certain death. I always think they'd be, be radical for these guys to get in a severe bloodbath, that they want to do something very noble, but it'd also be cool to uh, live through the end. So loyalty and brotherhood have always been important in this show, but given the events from last season, has that changed the dynamics, dynamics in, in, in the group since everyone's in chaos and mayhem? The loyalty and brotherhood between the brothers is, is pretty much there. This is a TV show, let's not forget that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think there's always moments where it, it seems like it's being challenged, but I think that's also part of a lot of the storylines is, is uh, it kind of that's a theme that's always kind of there. It's like, you know, I, I think that the characters are always being confronted with, with needing to prove their loyalty. And it's a TV show. They're not really a motorcycle club, which lives in rules. These guys break the rules all the time. But in reality, it kind of shows their humanity. Uh, and the rules they're breaking are secrets from each other. Like when Kim kissed Gemma, or different little things along the road. Um, I like that they're loyal to each other. You know, everybody else is fair game. I mean, every group is fair game, but not to each other. I so both your death has kind of affected the people that are, you know, Jax is in jail, so the rest of the crew has to kind of handle terrorist death. So how are they dealing with that? I kind of feel like it's it's this sort of cloud that's kind of... Yeah, it's going to be unveiled at the first yeah, episode. You know, uh, everybody's character's different, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Happy, Happy's just a silent soldier in a way. And they would be more like, uh, like Bobby or... Uh, uh, Bobby or Tig or James who on the show are much closer to Jax. I think it would affect them much deeper than... Uh, you know, yeah. What's it been like for uh, both your characters when you start out were a bit on the peripheral, you know, and as it's gone on and progressed, you've really become a core part of the show. What's that been like? And like, was that something where you nudged Kurt to bring you in more? Or was that a surprise? Kurt, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you nudge Kurt, that ain't the way to go. Mm -hmm. You know what? And you don't have to nudge Kurt. Think that the scripts are amazing. It wouldn't work anyway. Uh, this is absolutely positively his creation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, and it, I, I remember when I first got like, I was a cameraman a long time ago, I stopped, I went into my life, and I got, I lucked onto the show. Mm -hmm. And writing, one of the first writers who said, for you, you never worry about the money. For you, it's important to stay on the show. So I never argued about the money or the negotiation or this and that other thing, just it's important to stay on the show and stay alive on the show and do as many episodes as I can do. So, yes, it's absolutely changed my life completely. Mm -hmm. What's happened on the show? I think, I think also kind of starting, for, for me anyway, starting from the, periphery and kind of working your way in is that you, you, when you first, when I first came into it, it's mm -hmm. like, uh, you, you know, you, you're kind of picking up on the atmosphere of the whole production and all the characters and it's it's kind of a real, uh, I say this a lot of times, it's kind of a, it's been a real organic kind of journey to kind mm -hmm. of slowly s sort of find your, your way in, into it, you know, it's kind of been a, a felt like a real natural process mm -hmm. and it's, it's really exciting to learn the things that you do about your character as you go along and to discover them as, mm -hmm. as it's kind of, as the story is kind of revealing mm -hmm. itself. Was there a point at which you both felt your characters were like, okay, we're in the core now? You know, we're in From the From the first minute, I'm in the core. Right. <laughs> I, I also got to say, uh, I think, like what he was saying, I think uh, it's also for the writers as, and for Kurt. As they get to know us more and more and more and more and more and more, like, like I've had writers say, dude, we get so much dialogue just listening to you speak. And they listen to Ch Tommy speak. And then they start writing, catering. I'm a writer, I write. And it's so much easier to write when you kind of know that person, how he talks, his mannerisms, than when you don't. And as we've evolved, evolved it's uh, any build that you've seen any of us do on the show, Kurt built that. You know what I'm saying? He built this character from what he was into... Another minute and a half. Wow. 
Fire him in a worth of questions. Are you guys excited about, no, I'm not, I'm excited about your romance and the love. Yeah. You guys had a chance to work with them? Mary Romance is that? a friend of mine. Cool. Yeah, he's my buddy. So he's amazing. He's in a, just a genius, and that's it. It's gonna, yeah. I'm not in actually scenes with him, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Same, I'm, I'm not doing any scenes with him, but he's, he's He's a really interesting dude. Really cool. A really, choice. really incredibly intelligent, talented man. David, I heard you have a movie coming out. Can you talk about that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm, uh, I started the book of my life at the end of last season. I'll have it done this season. I also have uh, my own film. I'm writer, producer, director. I have 33 actors, 64 plus and crew. Uh, the pictures is back to me on that. And I'm going to shoot that up probably three or four days. And then I'll shoot that right after this. And, you know me, man. I'm doing yeah, an incredible I'm excited amount, for you. an incredible amount of things. And I was just blessed to meet all these people who gave me incredible opportunities. I think about two shows off me already. And just, uh, I, I was creative. You know, I do glass art, I'm a tattoo artist, a five point line mechanic. And I was, like I said, a cameraman for Zama King for a couple of years. He taught me script writing for features, and then I stopped that. And I went back to Holland, and I did my life for a while, and I came back to the United States, and this guy hired me the tech advisor and I met Kurt and then Kurt gave me some breaks of my lifetime that we write that show Time Magazine named it uh, best of the season I wrote it then and writing for TV is very different than writing for features you write for TV there's boards up and 18 points that have to be carried over and 18 new points you have to create and writing for TV with an ensemble cast is long and I just uh, Last man, with a first hand education, seven years of it's like seventh years of film school. That's it. Here we go. Here's the graduation. That's kind of the best Comic -Con. school, you think. <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. make great friends, great teachers. Uh, like <laughs> How excited are you to be at an event like this where you get a chance to interact with the fans and say farewell to them going into the, it's the amazing. final season? And there'll be no show without the fans. We are number one in 23 countries. I travel the world. I was in Bali and Thailand last year. I'm not the biggest dude on the show, and I got recognized everywhere. Yeah, it's pretty overwhelming. The show is number one in 23 countries. Uh, the fans are amazing. I'm at a restaurant in Bali with some friends from Holland, and the people on both sides are freaking out. And my Dutch friends ain't having it. <laughs> 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 These people want a photo, they'll just say, like, okay, sit down and let us finish up here. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know what, the writing is great, the stories are compelling. Harley Davidson's are everywhere. That brand name is like, I don't care if you're on a sand pan in the Amazon, you say, Harley Davidson. <laughs> the guy knows it and he's dreaming of having one. You know what I mean? And, uh, and those clubs, those patches, they're everywhere. When Thailand has a run, 5,000 people show up. Here comes the boss, and we gotta go. <laughs> hey, you guys Thank are you. amazing. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.